Hi folks, we're continuing with some Chapter 4 homework problems and this is number 14. A 60 kilogram crate rests on a level floor at a shipping dock. The coefficient of static and kinetic frictions are 0.6, excuse me, 0.76 and 0.41 respectively. What horizontal pushing force is required to just start the crate moving and slide the crate across the floor at a constant speed? Now, just start the crate moving. So when we're just starting the crate moving, what we're talking about is we are talking about a state of static friction. So when something is in a state of static friction, here's what's going on. We have got this crate that is sitting there. Gravity is pulling it down. Normal force, of course, is up. The force applied is going to be equivalent to the force of static friction. And uh, we have to apply a force so that we want the force applied has to be equal to the force of static friction. And that's what we want to do. Now, this is the sum of the forces that are going to be horizontal on the box. Um, and the sum of the forces that are going to be vertical on the box are going to be force of gravity equals force normal. This is also a situation when it's just starting to move. Um, both of these sets of forces are going to equal zero because it's just going to be equal on in all situations. We have no mention of acceleration anywhere in this problem. So let's start over here with the vertical forces. Our normal force then will be equivalent to force of gravity, which is mass times acceleration of gravity. And our mass of our box, we are told, is 60 kilograms. So 60 kilograms times our acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. So our normal force, I'm just going to flip them because by convention, what you're solving for goes on the left, 60 times 9.8 meters per second squared is 588 newtons. That's my normal force. Now, is that the answer? Nope, but that's an important step towards the answer. So I want to know what is the horizontal pushing force required to just start it moving. That is my force applied. That's really what I'm looking for. Friction force, as you know, friction force is equal to mu times normal force. Well, so I am going to replace this force of static friction with the mu static friction times the force of normal force. Normal force and then the coefficient of static friction. So the force applied is going to be the coefficient of static friction. And we're told in our problem that the static friction is 0.7. Six. So 0.76 times my normal force, and my normal force I found over here, 588 newtons. So 588 times 0.76 to start out my force applied to just make it move is going to be 447 newtons, if I round off correctly. And that is just to get it start moving, to start it moving. Now, the second part of the problem says this. How much force is required to slide the crate at a constant speed? Now, think about this for a second. Sliding it at a constant speed, is this going to require more force or less force? Well, the coefficient of kinetic friction in this situation is 0.41. So it always takes less force to keep an object moving than after it is moving. So the sum of the forces vertical are going to be exactly the same. Force of gravity is going to be equal to normal force, and that's not going to change. So my normal force is going to be exactly the same that it was up above the 588 newtons. So I'm going to just use that same value, 588 newtons. But the force applied to make the object move now is going to be the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. Coefficient of kinetic friction. Kinetic friction in this situation is 0.41 times my normal force 588 newtons. We pick up 
my calculator. So I'm going to have 0.41 times 588, and I end up with 241 newtons to keep it moving. A lot less force to keep an object moving than to start it moving due to the difference between static and kinetic friction. Next problem. Next problem says this, a dock worker loading a crate on a ship finds that a 20 kilogram crate initially at rest on a horizontal surface requires 75 newtons of horizontal force to set it in motion. However, after the crate is in motion, a horizontal force of 60 newtons is required to keep it moving with a constant speed. What is the coefficient of static friction between the crate, and what is the coefficient of kinetic friction between the crate? Okay, this is very similar to the problem we just did, so let's go ahead and look at this. Here is my crate, and gravity is down, normal force is up, force applied pushes it forward, friction force pushes it backwards. Now we're talking about a crate initially at rest on a horizontal surface, and we're talking about just to move it a little bit. So um, what is the coefficient of static friction? This is just to make it begin. So we are looking for the coefficient of static friction, and then once it's in motion, the coefficient of kinetic friction. So if we're going to begin with the static situation, the static situation, in that situation, then the sum of the forces vertically are going to be equal to zero. That's going to be my normal force and my force of gravity. And we're sitting on something flat, so force of gravity will equal my normal force. And my normal force is going to be equal to gravity, and you and I both know gravity is mass times acceleration. So my normal force will be equal to the mass of the crate, which is 20 kilograms, times the acceleration of gravity, 9.8, meters per second squared, and the normal force then will be equivalent to 196 newtons. If I still remember how to multiply, maybe I'm silly. Let's do that again, because um, I did that in my head. 20 times 9.8, 196 newtons. Ooh, the old girl still got it. Okay, now, in the sum of the forces horizontal, in this situation, when we're talking about the static situation just to move, and I know this feels funny, we want just the force to make it begin moving. So we want a situation where, I just get a slide up so we can see what was going on, where the force applied will just counteract the force of friction. So force applied will equal the friction force. And we want to know, so the force applied in this situation um, is going to be 75 newtons. We know that. And the friction force is going to be mu static times the normal force. So let's replace what we know. In this situation, the horizontal force replied is 75 newtons. That is here, 75 newtons. We're looking for mu static. Normal force we get from over here. So this is 196 newtons. So my mu static is going to be 75 newtons divided by 196 newtons. So let's grab my calculator. 75 divided by 196 is going to be 0 0.383 is mu static, coefficient of friction in a static situation. Now, in the kinetic situation, in the kinetic situation, here's what's going on. We change colors of pen. In this situation, the sum of the forces vertical are exactly the same. That's not changing at all. But in the sum of the forces horizontal, we're going to have a situation where to move it at a constant speed, let's go back up to the problem, it says to move it with a constant speed, 60 newtons is required. Because it's moving at a constant speed, the sum of the forces horizontal equals zero, or the force applied will be equal to the force of friction. Force applied is 60 newtons. We're told that. Friction force is equivalent to mu kinetic times force normal. 
force normal is the same normal force because it's the same crate sitting on the same flat surface. So 60 newtons equals mu kinetic. Oh, what happened to my page? Wait for it. It usually pops back. There it is. Times 196 newtons. Mu kinetic then is going to be equal to 60 newtons divided by 196 newtons. I'm going to grab my calculator. 60 divided by 196 and I end up with 0 0.306 is my coefficient of friction kinetic. Very subtle. These problems can be tricky when you word them and uh, that is something we all have to keep in mind. Okay, let's see if we've got the time for one more of these. Let's look at our time, our clock. we got plenty of time. All right, here goes. A 81 kilogram baseball player slides into second base. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the player and the ground is 0.49. What's the magnitude of the frictional force acting on the player? Okay, so let's just take that much of the problem. Friction force, as you know, is mu times normal force. Now, if we've got a baseball player, and this is my little baseball player, give this person a little hat, and this baseball player is sliding into home plate or second base, wherever he is, and this person is just sliding on the dirt, um, let's take a look at the forces involved here. Force of gravity is down. Normal force is up force applied. There is no force applied. There's no force applied. The only thing going on is this guy is sliding towards second base. The only force in this whole plane is friction slowing the ball player down. So the friction force is going to be mu times normal. Normal force equals the force of gravity. So we want to know what's the magnitude of the friction force. The friction force is going to be um, mu, which we're told is 0.49. The normal force equals the force of gravity, and force of gravity we know is equal to mass times acceleration of gravity, and we know our ball player is a point, I'm just doing this a step at a time so I don't lose anybody, is an 81 kilogram ball player. 9.8 meters per second squared. So the frictional forces acting on the ball player are going to be 9.8 times 81 times 0.49 times. It's going to be rounding it off to three sig figs. 389 newtons are the frictional forces on my ball player. All right, part B. If the ball player comes to rest after in a time of 1.60 seconds, he's going to have a final velocity of zero. What was the initial velocity? Oh boy, howdy, how the heck are we going to figure that out? We want to know initial velocity. Well, if we want to know initial velocity, it would really help if we had acceleration, wouldn't it? How are we going to find acceleration of this ball player? We're going to go back and use F equals MA. And how are we going to do that? Well, like this. We know force. We know the only force acting on this ball player was friction, making him change velocity as he's sliding into second base. So if this is the force, we know his mass, and we have the 389 newtons, we're going to do this. Whoa, I'm ran slight, I slid the wrong way. Hang on. Watch your eyeballs. I'm going to find acceleration. So acceleration is going to be force divided by mass. What force? This is the force, the only force, making this ball player decelerate, that force of friction. We have an 81 kilogram ball player. So if I divide those out, 389 divided by 81 kil kilograms, I have a rate of acceleration or deceleration of 4.80 meters per second squared. Now that I've got that, I can shove it in here and I can go back and find initial velocity. To do that, I'm going to have to pick up an old kinematics equation. Which one looks friendly? I think I'm going to find Vf is Vo plus At. 
and I'm going to find initial velocity is going to be final velocity minus acceleration time. Final velocity is zero minus my acceleration of 4.8 meters per second squared and time 1.6 seconds. And I'm going to end up with 4.8 times 1.6. I end up with an original velocity of 7.68 meters per second. Now you may be looking at me going, um, <clears throat> Mary, there's a negative sign there. Why sh is there not a negative sign there? Because I forgot something. What did I forget? This is not an acceleration. The ball player is not speeding up. The ball player was slowing down. So when I put it in here, I should have had one more negative sign. So negative times a negative will make a positive. That is a positive original velocity. All right, that will do for that one, and we'll see you later. Bye.